the Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Marion and Jim Jordan as Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, the King's Men, and Billy Mills Orchestra. The show opens with I Know That You Know. Minded group of citizens has selected a prominent speaker to deliver an oration next Thursday on George Washington and his ideals. And here in the living room at 79 Wistful Vista, rehearsing his speech, we find Fibber McGee and Molly. And so, my friends, let us look back at those fearful days at Get- uh, 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 Valley Forge. When discouraged and ragged, a little band of faithful men listened to their leader as he talked to them across the campfires. America's first fireside chat. <laughs> My friends, he says... McGee, Ma- what on earth are you talking about? I'm rehearsing my speech, Molly. Men, we must cross the Delaware tonight. One if by land, two if by sea. Stop your malarkey now, Fibber McGee. <laughs> What'd you say? What's this all about? I told you it's my speech. I'm talking on the subject of George Washington and his ideals in front of a large and important group next Thursday morning. Oh. Hey, uh, how's this for a gesture when I talk about crossing the Delaware? With my hand up to my forehead like this, like I was looking into the distance. Mm -hmm. You look like a sinus headache looking for an aspirin. (laughs) And uh, who is this large and important group you're going to dazzle with your electrocution? It's, it's elocution, not electrocution. I know it. I was just pulling a switch. <laughs> and if you must know, I'm speaking to the Wistful Vista Grammar School pupils. Hmm. Heavenly days. The whole student body? Well, no. Just the fourth grade. <laughs> ah, the poor little things. And what time of the day will this leaking gas be detected? <laughs> At 11.30 a.m. 11.30? Yes, sir. Do you mean those innocent little kiddies have to take that stuff on an empty stomach? <laughs> oh, Molly, I suppose you don't think I'll do right by George. By George, I don't think you could. <laughs> Molly, you surely you ain't accusing me, Fibber McGee, your own husband, of, of, of toying with the truth. Toying with it? <laughs> You'd make a municipal playground of it. Did you ever tell the truth for one solid hour? Why, of course I did. McGee? Well, I bet I could if I wanted to. What'll you bet? Anything. All right. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll bet you a box of cigars against that fur coat I've been wanting that you can't tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth for one hour. A box of cigars against that fur coat? Right. Well... As the castor oil says when it heard the baby whimper, I think I've been taken. (laughs) But okay.
Okay, I'll do it. It's a bet. You betcha. It's two o'clock, and for the next 60 minutes, you tell nothing but the truth. Right. And I don't think I'm going to like it either. <laughs> well, you've made your bet. Now don't lie in it. <laughs> now remember, for one whole hour, you'll have to... Somebody at the door, Molly. If you answer it, my foot's asleep. Is that the truth? Well, no. The truth is, I'm just too lazy. <laughs> now we're getting somewhere. Well, Come in. Hello there, daughter. Hello, Johnny. Want to buy a couple of cut-rate tickets for skiing lessons? Or do you know how to ski already? <laughs> Who, me know how to ski? Why, say, when it comes to skiing, old-timer... A box uh... of cigars against that fur coat, McGee. <laughs> Oh. As I was saying, old-timer, when it comes to skiing, I'm probably the dumbest guy that ever slapped a slope. <laughs> I'm awful. Too fat. Too clumsy. Too left feet. I'm hopeless. I guess I'm in the wrong studio, folks. I thought this was the Fibber McGee program. <laughs> well, it is, Mr. Old-timer. Me husband has just made a bet to tell the truth for one hour. And believe me, the next 55 minutes are going to crawl around or crawl around like a beetle with a bunion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, if nobody ever stuck their neck out, they'd make Pullman windows easier to open. <laughs> I made it. <laughs> That's pretty good, Johnny. But that ain't the way I heard it. <laughs> The way I heard it, one feller says to tell the feller, say, he says, you got any idea how the Fibber McGee program ranks these days? Nope, says tell the feller, but it sure is, ain't it? <laughs> well, Johnny, if the truth gets too tough for you... <laughs> Remember George Washington? Huh? The reason he wore a three-cornered hat was because he was always getting backed into a corner. <laughs> so long, kid. Oh, no. and Molly to return, I'd like your attention for just a minute. Have you ever heard of a consumer dividend? Probably not. I don't know that any company has ever declared one before. Well, you get a consumer dividend now when you buy Johnson's self-polishing glow coat or Johnson's paste or liquid wax. In short, you get one-third more for your money. On most dealers' counters right now, while they last, you'll find extra-large packages of these famous polishes containing one-third more than the regular sizes. You pay only the regular price. The extra one-third is your consumer dividend in appreciation of the way you've been buying Johnson polishes. This offer is good for all important sizes, pints, pounds, quarts, gallons, and so forth. But you'd better hurry. We've shipped dealers an awful lot of these extra-large containers, but a lot of housewives use these polishes. So ask your dealer tomorrow for Johnson's self-polishing glow coat and Johnson's paste and liquid wax and get one-third extra free. I gotta answer that, bud. <laughs> okay, uh, Chuck, uh, I hate to say it, but uh, I think Fibber McGee and Molly is the best program on the air. <laughs> yeah, okay, bud. <laughs> well, if that isn't conceit, of all the peanut fed, hickory smoked, sugar cured hams I ever heard. <laughs> Wait a minute, Molly, that ain't fair. I had to tell the truth, didn't oh, I? Oh, dear. Chuck, who's that there at our door? Wait till I peek out the window. 
Oh, it's Mrs. Uppington. No, you mean old 395? Why 395? <laughs> That's as close as she'll ever get to the 400. <laughs> Don't you get it, Molly? I says... Ain't Miss... funny, McGee. Okay. Come in. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Uppington? So nice to see you. Oh, and how do you do, Mrs. McGee? And Mr. McGee? Hi, Uppy. Well, what seems to be the trouble with you today, Mr. McGee? You don't seem as cheerful as usual. Yeah, he has a slight cramp in his style, Mrs. Uppington. Oh, really? May, it must have been something he ate. I thought it strange to see Mr. McGee so silent. He's he's usually so, uh, so loquacious. What do you mean, loquacious? I ain't touched a drop since New Year's Eve. No, she means Gabby, Gabby. Oh. Yes. As Maestro Mills was saying to me last night, Mr. McGee was born with a silver spoon in his mug, and there's been something funny staring there ever since. <laughs> I thought that was so whimsical. Oh, yeah. Well, wait till I catch up with that guy. I'll wham the whimsy out of him. <laughs> oh, now, Mr. McGee, really, I didn't mean that. Huh? Uh, well, um, now, what I came over for, Mrs. McGee, was to get your opinion of my new hat. Oh, tell me, how do you like it? It just arrived from Paris. Oh, why, it's simply divine. It really is. So uptown, so, so, uh, chic. Uh, 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 do you like it, Mr. McGee? Huh? Uh, you want the truth, I think? Why, uh, yes. Yes, I do. Okay, you ask for it. I think that uh, happens. Oh, uh, McGee. Huh? Will you get me a glass of water? I think I feel a little faint. Oh, my, you poor dear. Why don't you sit down there? Uh, but getting back to that hat. <laughs> you better sit down, too, Uppy. <laughs> Now, uh, before he says anything, Mrs. Uppington, let me warn you. Never take McGee literally. He always means just the opposite. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> How quaint. But I'm sure I'll value his opinion. Now, go on, Miss McGee. Okay, Uppy. I think that hat is marvelous. Oh. It's the most becoming hat you ever wore. Makes you look 20 years younger. Well, heavenly day. Oh, Mr. McGee, yes. do you really think so? Oh, oh my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> 20 years younger? Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> well, uh, oh, oh, you always mean the opposite of what you say. So you mean that I look 20 years older. Mm -hmm. Well, goodbye. <laughs> Call the bet off. It's too nerve-wracking. Why, Molly, you mean you want me to lie about things? Yes, I do. I mean, no, I don't. That is, I don't want you to lie when, uh, well, at least you might be diplomatic. Oh, why did I ever start this thing? <laughs> what makes you so contrary? I ain't contrary. I'm just keeping my word. When Fibber McGee says he'll do something, he's going to do it in spite of you can't stay it on the radio or high water or something like that there. <laughs> Oh, it's Mr. DiCopolis. Oh, hi, Nick. What's on your mind? Hello, Cupid. Hello, Fizzer. I'm making a goodwill detour because I'm trying to find out why my customer is staying away from my candy kitchen in such a big crowd. <laughs> if all the people who are not doing business with DiCopolis are laying end to end, I'd step on his face. <laughs> I'm sure I don't know why your business is so bad, Mr. DePopolis. Well, I know. You do, Fizzer? You betcha. Then tell me what is wrong before I'm going into bankruptcy. Now, uh, <laughs> McGee, please don't... Now, uh... look, Nick. In the first place, your sandwiches are too thin. Oh, my. People that eat in your joint don't pry a sandwich apart to see what kind it is. They just hold it up to the light. Oh, oh be a little more specific, Fizzer. What kinds of sandwiches are you referring to? Well, your minced ham, your minced olive sandwiches, for one. Oh, well, it is hard to mince an olive, so it is making a decent showing between two slices of bread. I think Mr. DePopolis' candy is very good, McGee. Oh, yeah, well, while I'm telling the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, let me tell you what I think of his candy. Sure, go ahead, Fizzer. But be kind to my chocolate rabbits. They might be somebody's mother. <laughs> Okay, forget the candy. But that chicken salad of yours, that, that's awful. Is that so? Yes, that's The so. populous chicken salad is made out of the finest tuna fish money can buy. Why, of 
course it is, Mr. DePopolis. McGee, now you've said enough. I ain't said half enough. Nick, your coffee shop is a place where every good little soda mint tablet wants to go when it dies. <laughs> Do I make myself plain? Plain? Yes. You make yourself positively ugly. <laughs> Fisher, you and I are always being a bosom friend. But one more smart cracks from you, and one bosom is finding a carving knife in itself, and guess who? So long, Shoopy. Well, now you've done it again. Done what? Broken up another beautiful friendship with your brutal frankness. Ah, so you're beginning to see what telling the truth really means, eh? But that's the way. By I mind the time I was an elephant hunting in Africa, I was up on a high... Oh, hold on there. What am I talking about? i never been in Africa. <laughs> nice recovery, dearie. Well, thanks. But yes. Well, hello there, folks. Say, I hear Fibber's going to make a speech at the uh, grammar school pupils on Washington's birthday. Yes, he is, Mr. Wilcox. How do you know? Well, I just came from the school. Oh. I had to make a speech there myself to the class in domestic science. I... Oh, you did, huh? Well, what was your subject, Mr. Wilcox? said he, with a sly wink at Racine, Wisconsin. <laughs> well, I talked on the subject of uh, too many cooks can't spoil the linoleum when it's protected with Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. <laughs> too tidal, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Very, if it leaves you any time for your speech. Well, I didn't need much time. I just told the pupils how they could keep their kitchen so much more clean and bright and cheerful with Johnson's glow coat. That's right. Because if they spilled a little gravy or a gob of goulash on the linoleum, they could just wipe it off with a damp cloth, you see. That's absolutely correct. So, of course, Johnson's glow coat was an old story to most of those youngsters. Their mothers have been using it for years. And Mr. Wilcox is absolutely right. It's true, every word of it. What? He said everything you've been saying is true, Mr. Wilcox. You betcha. It certainly is. Well, I'll be a... You mean I could come in here and talk about our product without being subject to a lot of heckling that... My gosh, I've seen everything now. So long, folks. Now, look, Eugene. It's all very well to tell the truth, but do you have to work so hard at it and frighten all our friends? Molly, when I say I'll do something, I do it. No halfway stuff with me. I'll... I'll answer it, McGee. I'm getting afraid to have you talk to anybody. No, sir. I'll talk to him myself. I feel kind of tough today. Be like the organ grinder that always went around with a chimp on his shoulder. <laughs> Hello? Who? No, Mr. Gildersleeve isn't here, Mrs. Gildersleeve. No, I ain't seen him since, oh, well, since last Wednesday. In the stationery store when he was buying you that valentine. Huh? Oh, you know, Mrs. Gildersleeve, that big, lacy valentine with the red heart. How'd you like it? Huh? Oh, you didn't get it? For goodness sakes, McGee, now don't... What say, Mrs. Gildersleeve? Oh, sure, your husband even wrote a little poem on it for you. Sure, I can remember it word for word. It says, here's to your eyes as blue as the skies. Here's to your hair so gold and fair... When you're away, I always grieve. Your Valentine, signed Gildersleeve. Uh, hello? Hello? She hung up on me. McGee. Huh? Do you know what you've done? What you mean? Mrs. Gildersleeve has black hair and brown eyes. What? <laughs> well, I had to tell the truth, didn't I? <laughs> oh, dear. Boy, will she have something to say to old Crocky when he gets home. <laughs> Well, you know what Confucius said about that. What did Confucius say? Confucius say, the man who... Uh, but wait a minute, the king's men can tell you better. Okay, boys, tell them what Confucius say. Ring 
hang out in Mustard Jew. Please, 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 ding dong. Confucius say a girly act too shy. This boy never say. Good night, he say. Goodbye, Goodbye forever. Oh, Confucius, very, very wise. Bring confusion in disguise. All day long he sing his song and mumble in his beard. All oh, little shiny boy listen what he say. Never learn a chop chop thing. Confucius say all chorus girls are grand. But always write them letters in the sand. Confucius say if you write love in note, uh uh, you'll have to write big checks for nice fur coat. Mean chinchilla. Oh, Confucius, very, very smart. Know the way to Curly's heart. All day long he sit and think he real Joe Miller King. He make a wise crack long ago. Now same wise crack on the radio. He's sticky neck way out, but him a clever so and so. Confucius say a wolf is at your door. Remember, he makes nice rugs for the floor. Confucius, say cheer up and thank your star. Things couldn't be as awful as they are. Confucius comes staggering home one night and four. Confucius' wife waited to meet him at the door. A furious wife of the rolling pin, don't bother Confucius at all. Confucius not much better with his back against the wall. Confucius, say. Dad, rat the dad, rat a dad, rat a dad, rat it anyhow. Confucius lived to Zoom for radio. So no can broadcast all these things he knows. But if Confucius him alive today, Confucius, say. Johnson's wax. Remember what Confucius said. Hey, Molly, how much longer have I got to go on this truth business? Well, not long, dearie. About eight minutes. Can you hold out? Well, I don't know. I'll try, but then... Oh, dear. Come in. Oh, hello there, little girl. Hi, mister. What you doing, hmm? Ah, <laughs> just marking time, sis. Waiting for Tempest to fugit, you might say. <laughs> hmm? I says I'm waiting for Tempest to fugit. That's Latin. Tempest fugit means time flies, see? Okay. How, how do you ever do it? How do you do what? Time flies. <laughs> Look, sis, I ain't timing a fly. I'm telling you that... Oh, never mind. All righty. Will you tell me a story, mister, please? And will you please, mister? Do you tell dandy stories, I bet you. <laughs> Why, sure, sis. I ever tell you about the time I popped the bear single-handed? Did you really? Did I? Well, sir, here was this great big bear. Do you remember the fur coat? Yeah. This bear had a coat of fur so long... Huh? <laughs> oh, 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 the fur coat. Oh, you know, I, uh, well, I'm sorry, sis. The bear I meant was a little teddy bear, and I was only three years old at the time, and he got the best of me at that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's a very good story, I betcha. Well, I know, but I'm working under a kind of a handicap today. <laughs> See me tomorrow, sis. You go on home and get your mother to tell you a story. I can't. Why not? She isn't home, I betcha. She went downtown to buy a snood. A uh, what? A snood. You know what a snood is, don't you? A uh, snood? What is it? My daddy says it's a buckle that a woman wears on her brains. <laughs> well, if your old man is such a wit, let him tell you a story. He isn't home either. He's downtown buying a monster. A monster? Go on, you can't buy a monster. You can too, I bet you. Oh, no, you can't. Oh, yes, you can. Oh, no, you can't. Oh, yes, you can. Oh, don't give me that stuff, sis. Where can anybody buy a monster? At the Bontown Department Store. They're having a monster sale today only. Go on, mister. I think I'll wait for Dollar Day and go down and buy a few bucks. <laughs> now, let's see. 
What did I do with my speech? Oh, here it is. And so, kiddies, you must all try and pattern yourselves. Come in. Now, look here, McGee. <laughs> You've interfered in my life once too often. Now, 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 take it easy, Gildersleeve. And quit pointing that gun at me. I can explain everything. Or can I? Now, uh, you see, Mr. Gildersleeve, McGee thought... McGee that... never thought in his life. <laughs> oh, is that so? You can't talk to my wife like that about me. <laughs> I can't, eh? No. I'm a desperate man, McGee. You're trying to break up my home. Huh? You told my wife I sent a valentine to another woman. I never know such a thing. I told her you sent it to her. But I didn't send it to her. I sent it to my Aunt Fanny. <laughs> yes, yes. Your Aunt Fanny. Oh, help me, McGee. That's the truth. But my wife won't believe it. And just for the trouble you've caused me, McGee, I'm going to take my revenge right now. Ah, put down that gun, please, Mr. Gildersleeve. It's too late! Now, wait, oh. Gildersleeve. You wouldn't shoot a guy with glasses on, would you? Where's my glasses, Molly? <laughs> One side, Mrs. McGee. I'm not a very good shot. <laughs> One! Oh. What have I done? Two! You'll know in a minute, Molly. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. McGee, your time is up. Oh, wowee, I'm saved. Saved? What is it? Now, look, Gildersleeve, here's what happened. This whole thing was a joke, a frame-up. <laughs> I planned this whole thing with your wife just for a laugh, you see. You, you were... did? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Well, sure. <laughs> the whole thing was a gag. Yeah. <laughs> now, you go on back home and ask her so. yeah, I'll do that, McGee. You bet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, what a relief. My goodness, I certainly bit on this one. <laughs> you think not? <laughs> You should have heard what she called me, McGee. And to think it was just a joke. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to have made a scene, Mrs. McGee. So long, Fibber, you old rascal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Phew. Ah, where was I? Oh, yes. And so, kiddies, you must all try to pattern yourselves after George Washington. Even as I have myself. Oh, what's the... Why, from the time I was a little child, I was the most... Fibber and Molly will be back in just a moment. Ladies, here's a recipe for a cheerful kitchen. Take one can of Johnson's self-polishing glow coat, add practically no work at all, and just watch that old linoleum floor gleam and sparkle. In fact, you can sit back in an easy chair for 20 minutes of relaxation and watch it shine while it dries. Glow coat requires no rubbing or buffing. You simply apply and let dry. The hours of work that glow coat saves you over a period of time, you can use for some of those many other things that are hard to squeeze into your busy days. For reading, bridge, shopping, or personal beauty care. And in the meantime, with your floors protected with glow coat, your kitchen will be a more cheerful place to work in, and your linoleum itself will last longer. So order a can of Johnson's self-polishing glow coat tomorrow. Spell G-L-O hyphen C-O-A-T. Six hundred seconds without telling a lie. Uh -huh, that's right. Yep, and it's a load off my mind, too. What do you mean? Well, now I don't have to buy you that fur coat. That's right, you won't. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Molly? I cannot tell a lie, McGee. I bought that fur coat yesterday. <laughs> oh, oh. Good night. Good night, all. <laughs> Fibber
This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat, inviting you all to join us again next Tuesday night at this same time. Good night.